You, what you said reminded me of uh, there was this Washington Post article about uh, masculinity these days. Yeah. And there's a really nice quote in it from this guy, Scott Galloway, uh, that said, uh, my view is that for masculinity, a decent place to start is garnering the skills and strength that you can advocate for and protect others with. If you're really strong and smart, you'll garner enough power, influence, and kindness to begin protecting others. That real men, men be protecting people. They do be uh, protecting. They do be protecting. And, and so that's a nice, you know, a nice lesson that, that you have gleaned. That is a great way to put it. That's a really great way to put it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, GYBB, get your balls back, WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolution? It's being podcasted, and I am excited uh, because this is a special show. Now, keep in mind, I have said that 600 times before, but this <laughs> time, I mean it because uh, we got a special guest. But before we do that, I got to say what's up to my partner in crime. Harry, what's popping, baby? What's uh, going on? You good? Uh, I'm I'm doing excellent, Dante. If I was doing any better, I'd have to make it up like Hassan Minaj. So no. everything is going <laughs> great. Shots fired. Hey, listen. Uh, what do you want me to do? Weird. Hold on. The mailman just came. I think I got some anthrax in the mail. I'll oh, be right boy. back. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I feel I feel more connected to you now, Dante. I feel more sympathy. <laughs> I, feel, I do. I do. And, uh, First. Let me introduce some fucking guests because uh, this is my man. I miss him a lot. I don't get to see him nearly as much as I would like to, so I'm really excited. I actually really am excited to have him on the fucking podcast. It's uh, give it a funny dude, man. Uh, t- one of the biggest comics in England and Edinburgh <laughs> ever. <laughs> give it up for my boy Mike Cavalier. What's up, Mike? Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to be here. Happy for this to be a special edition of your <laughs> podcast. I also do think that every episode can be special in the way I know sometimes people might be like, well, if everyone is special, then doesn't that mean that none of them are special? And to that, I would say that, you know, the every person on the X-Men has a special power, each exactly. one of them, but they don't all have the same special power, exactly you know, so. So I would I'm more on lines of snowflakes. Each snowflake is very exactly. unique and special. I'm I'm a mutant snowflake. Happy to be here. <laughs> What's well, going? It's good to see you, brother. It's good to see you. Uh, we were talking off the air about you traveling through Europe, doing Edinburgh film uh, comedy festival stuff. So one something I I endeavor to do, but I mean, uh, you were saying that you had a really good experience with that, yeah. And, um, you know, totally. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, I'd, I'd been once before 2018. My girlfriend and I went uh, and really just loved. I mean, the city is amazing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the whole city becomes this festival of comedy shows and theater and dance and magic and interactive, like immersive mm-hmm. experiences. And it's mm-hmm. so, like this year I, we went back and I, I saw like I saw like over 60 shows that mm-hmm. weren't my I, I did my own hour show. Right. 20 five nights out of 26 nights wow. and uh my girlfriend saw 20 shows like and then i had some friends there and just you meet a lot of comedians from australia europe like all over yeah. the world and you get to see what other people you know it's just a really beautiful like learning experience for yeah. for your own comedy and like expanding uh you know your knowledge base and comfort yeah. zone and so yeah i i loved it it's funny because the way the way you yeah. describe Edinburgh is a lot different than other comedians. I oh, guess yeah. you make your own experience. <laughs> like uh, I was there for a month and I was drunk every day. And the old Mike's like, I mean, I saw so many great shows, met so many wonderful people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I climbed a people, mountain. Yeah, <laughs> I've had people go, "Yo, it was a f- oh, what are you doing?" But uh, we, we're supposed to have a uh, uh, Bronston on here. Uh, you know Bronston, right? Uh, I'm not Uncle sure. Jones? But yeah, Bronson Jones, he he goes out there like regularly. Ah. So um, it might be another, I'll, I'll pass this number on to you because it might Please. be a good connect or whatever. Um, and I just, you know, I was saying that my son is out in England, so I'm I'm trying to do it the bitch way. I'm just <laughs> going to go out there to visit and then, you know, use use my son as an excuse to meet some comics and and uh and so on and so forth but yeah man i i think it's all the, also the preparation what i was thinking about 
is um how long you been with your girl? Come in, I mean, because this is the same girl that you've been with, yes? This is this is we have been together seven years now. Wow. See, now and what's interesting is I remember that y'all were in an open relationship at some point in time. And then for how long? How long was that? Uh, so when we met, I was in an open relationship with uh -huh. a different person uh. and then that relationship ended. And so I would say the following year, uh, my girlfriend and I moved in together and pretty much from around that point on. So, uh, mm. for the bulk of the relationship, uh, we have been, uh, happily monogamous in a way that I didn't know was possible, you know, cause yeah. I, I got married when I was 25 to mm -hmm. a woman that I'd only been with uh, about a year. And I was like, well, this, I think this is it. And then after right. a couple of years, I was like, well, this isn't it. And, <laughs> and that's at one way that to, point, that's, yeah. I, Mike it, it, does have a wonderful way of simplifying life's most <laughs> difficult or, this, yeah. uh, maybe well, this not. isn't it. <laughs> yeah. And, and so at that point, that was the first time that I was like, well, maybe monogamy isn't the thing for me because mm -hmm. I tried it once and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And so then I was, you know, exploring at ethical non-monogamy, polyamory, open relationships for yeah. a number of years. And that's, of course, like probably when we met and got to know each other, uh, uh, that that was like, you know, first and like for on the forefront of my dating experience mind. But yeah. now uh, I feel like, I, you know, I hadn't I don't I don't mean it. Some of people say like, well, you just haven't met the, met the right person yet. And it's it's not that because sometimes people don't. First, you have to obviously be the right person. You have to be right. the I, right. I wasn't the best version, the rightest version of myself yet. Right. But also I hadn't met this person that, you know, fit sort of like, you know, the other half of the amulet beautifully right. and like. Not that every, and I feel like the energy that I had that I was putting into dating lots of people, I still have and put it into like, you know, being friends with lots of like meeting, I mm -hmm. meet new comedians, I meet new friends, I meet right, right, other right. artists and like that same, you know, the, the thing that could be new relationship energy becomes like new friendship energy. You go on a podcast with somebody you've never been right, on right. before or haven't seen it or like, wow, like we should hang out. We should do this. All, we should start another podcast all right, of our right. own. And, but that. I used to think I'd be missing something by mm -hmm. not being able to be with as many people romantically as possible. But I realized eventually, I'm like, well, my, I don't, I'm not going to, this lifetime is short, you know, like, yeah. I don't know how long, hopefully, you know, many yeah. more decades, but right. the amount, the time that I, I, I'm not uh, running out of enjoyment with my girlfriend. So I'm mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, this is, right. this is, this is it. And I, yeah. and this will be it. But yeah, so that it was, that's how it was. And this is how it is. Fun fact. Harry feels the same way about, uh, blowing, uh, trans women. So, oh. just so you know, you just, <laughs> well, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess what, how did this, why? What? <laughs> sure. I mean, I'm. You know, it's one of those things. You, you go, hey, maybe this is the way to go. I don't oh know. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike, you have no idea how uh, how much fun Harry and I still have with <laughs> with, with my ridiculousness. <laughs> oh, sure. I just, I can imagine. <laughs> just absurd ridiculousness. <laughs> and and that and one just... that one caught me off, so off guard. I'll tell you why. Because he calls my name because I multitask when I do this show. So I'm right in the description. Like right now I go, oh, OK, we're talking about finding the right partner. That's good for the description. And Harry, oh, OK, I got to check in. I got to make sure I'm in for this. And then it's about me blowing train. I didn't even know how to yes and to that. Like my comedic instinct was like, all right, yes and what? Wait, what now? Is this I have been known to throw a, uh, a fastball at the at the people in the stands every once yeah. in a while. I've been known to just beam a ninety mile an hour fastball at a, a bit at outside a, at a young boy just waiting for a fly ball. But it, the, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, from my experience, I was like, oh, obviously, Dante and Harry have an ongoing relationship full of many inside jokes. Like, clearly, they get each other. They know what's going on. Sure. Like, Harry will handle this one because I don't understand exactly what the parallel or the reference is. And then Harry is on. Uh, Harry, you and I should start a podcast is what I'm saying. Go. There we go. Called Inside Jokes. Oh, Here's the thing, Mike. And, and, I was also I had the same instinct that you have. Well, clearly, this is an inside joke. That I and I'm going through my Rolodex. I'm like, what is he reference? Oh, nope. He's just this is the start of an inside joke. Brand new. The origin story of an inside joke. Oh god. It's uh 
My God. Uh, and it's always, Mike, it's always ridiculousness. Like, I, the only way, because, you know, Harry's a, a you know, Harry's a seasoned comic. So in order to get him, it's just got to really come from left field. It's got to really, because he's always on guard. So I, I got to, it's got, and it can't be too nuanced or sophisticated because it's just, just got to be dumb. Like your mom's does it, you know, like that'll get him. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> stupid. I understand um, a little more now. <laughs> <laughs> but and it's uh, purely for my enjoyment. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm happy for you to be enjoying yourself. You you found the one, and the one is you. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be the one for yourself first before uh, before you can find a one in another. So uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah. Talking about that, uh, the interesting thing you bring up with uh, where, where you go. You weren't complete as a person yet. But also the other thing is people change. The person you are at 20 is not the person you are at 30 and it's not the person you are at 40. So what happens is sometimes you meet somebody that is the right fit for you at 20, but they're not the right fit for you at 30. They're not the right fit for you at 40. You know, that can happen sometimes as well. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that change, you know, there are some changes that I mean, change is constantly happening in a person's life. And, you know, you don't want to stagnate. You always want to be like learning and growing. And uh, ex I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'll, I'll yeah. speak for myself. I always want to be learning and growing. And so it's nice to find a person who can do that with you as well, that, you know, you you have the same goals now, you have the same values now, or you, you have the same basic, yeah. you know, life relationship path now and then but yeah i remember like even years ago there was like a movie called scenes from a mall i think it was uh bet midler and woody allen and i do remember about, this yeah 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 like every the, i think one of them was maybe a psychologist or something mm -hmm. and or somebody had written a book about how you know every 10 years you're in a different relationship because because think about you know obviously like exactly what you said harry when you're 20 you're different from when you're 30 you're different from when you're 40 and maybe the changes you know by 20 25, 25 is when your brain is, they say, done developing. So anything before, that's when I got married, when I'm like, okay, wow. this is yeah, the yeah. thing. This is the one, like oh, my brain no, it's not. Yeah, hadn't <laughs> even been an adult yet yeah. for, you know, for it been, I was literally like a zero year old adult at that point. At this point, now I'm a 19 year old. I've been a, a fully, for, fully brain formed adult for 19 years. I'm about to turn, I'm about to turn 45. So I'm about to turn 20 in full, full brain formed adult years yeah. and and so yeah that's of it's something that's valuable like your your whole body like the the i think the the cells in your body morph and change your and they're completely different maybe every seven years they say from like you know a physiological uh, yeah. from like a, a physics perspective every moment uh the material of your body is shifting and isn't the same so yeah the i'm we like as humans there's a quote i like i wonder if i've shared this with you before a poet named robert haas who said uh repetition makes us feel secure variation makes us feel free so like in a relationship setting you know of course we want security we want comfort we want somebody who's gonna be there we want to we want the world to seem the same because you wake up the next day and right. things are different uh but too much too much sameness and then you might feel like oh no well this is boring or whatever it might be and so but too much difference too much variation might be like chaos you're like can't hold on to anything no groundedness no mm -hmm. so you want a balance of you know security and freedom of you know of repetition and variation which i find is nice if you find if they're if you're looking for a monogamous partner if you're looking for a partner if you're looking for the right person you want to find a person who is has enough sameness day to day year to year but also you know uh still has mystery and excitement and mm -hmm. potentials uh but you know surprises and fulfillment in those ways uh yeah so it's it we like the idea of security like what's this okay the 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 solar system has nine planets great got it now, wait it's got let it's got eight okay well that's different mm -hmm. you yeah. know and 
like that's what you know that's what science is is like yeah, constantly change. learning new things constantly be like oh yeah we were wrong about ev- almost everything is like we were wrong about that before i have a a joke i tell sometimes but it's just the truth that when i started out doing comedy 20 something 21 years ago now after a year i look back at my initial tapes or listen back to a cassette and i'm like well that was no good but thank <laughs> god i'm good now yeah, and then a year right. later i'm like well that that was no good every yeah, year i'm like yeah. that was no but good thank god i figured it out that's yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. Finally, yeah. finally, and I feel like similarly as a human. And in why relationships. would relationships be any different than that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, they, I, if only I, there was footage of you in your relationship, you know, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can yeah. look back on so the yeah, the open mic it. footage, going, yeah, yeah. What the fuck was I? Woo, no. Robin Haas has another uh, quote where he says. Bitches be crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Was that him? That was, wow. The originator. Because, you know, over the years, there's so many quotes that get misattributed. Like, I think some some of you might see that Abraham Lincoln said that or Martin Luther King or Oprah. Yeah. I heard that, too. That is such a great point. But you know what else is a great point? That if you could uh, follow us on uh, Patreon, www.patreon.com. Uh, slash, slash man school 202 follow us that's the thing that really helps us to support um and keep doing this show keep putting out this content man I'll, I'd, I'd appreciate that yeah we do uh patreon.com uh, slash man school 202 is where we do all the bonus content for the show we do a bonus episode every week at least one uh we also do a lot of uh, game breakdown relationship advice and also the classic episodes if you've been looking for all the classic episodes of man school 202 uh, starting with episode one, when we were the Beige Phillips show, uh, patreon.com slash manschool202 is where we're loading all those episodes. Uh, at this point, one a day. So that's where you can find them all archived. A bunch of good stuff. If you love the show, if you love what we're doing, go over to patreon.com slash manschool202 and sign up and support. Uh, what's, what's really interesting is I, I think, well, all jokes aside, because I'm just really silly. So let me just say what happened. I'm, I'm, I'm right now. I went, I went to Tijuana to get stem cells, and I'm in, and I woke up this month. So w- the stem cells rebuild your cartilage in waves. So it happens hmm. in waves. So this morning I woke up and I'm, I couldn't put weight on my knees. Right. Uh, so I'm a little loopy, but sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I want to say th- what's interesting is you. You know, getting back to bitches be crazy. Um, the the um, what's interesting is you find that you, you as it, when you're young, you're like, oh, let me just try something else. Let me let. let but when you're older, you're going, what is you you let? I, I guess I can put it like when you do comedy, you you do a joke and you go, this is the joke I wrote, and this is how it works, and this is the wording, and then as you get just so much more proficient there's little things that you can do with it little tone i mean even even when you talk about uh variations of tone you know volume movement um just uh pacing all of it and and it instantly can change the joke in different ways that you'd never even thought and so when you when you get somebody i mean you gotta you gotta have somebody who's who's compatible with compatible with you and somebody that you like but you start to understand that you affect each other and what you put in it it it, it yields something totally different you know that's uh, so true in fact uh, one of the experiences I had in Edinburgh this year that was so like, even if I had no other experiences from doing this festival for the whole month, uh, doing my, my hour 25 times, which, you know, sometimes the audiences are loud. Sometimes yeah. over the, sometimes it might be people who are more accustomed to a theater show. And so yeah. they're after the, show, they, it could be quieter than you expect, but afterwards everyone it's is like, it. I loved I it. And there was one particular show that might have been like one of the biggest audiences that was also ended up being a little quieter. Eventually, like it started off great, but then I got distracted by a guy sneezing a lot and I mm. kind of talked to him for a little and mm. I felt like I, I then lost a little momentum and then the rest of the show wasn't my favorite. There were still people there that were like, I loved it, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was, I, I knew, they say uh, Charles Burns is a, a musician who I think who said, it's the artist's burden to know what might have been. And so you always know, you know how the show Wait, goes. say that again, say that again. It's the artist's burden, like yeah. the comedian's burden wow. to know 
know what might have been. Like somebody else yeah. sees you do a show and they're like, that was amazing. And you know inside, like it's nice to say thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you had that experience. Yeah, inside, yeah. you're like, oh man, you should have been here last night or yeah, right. last week or tomorrow. And But we don't know. We have all the experiences. Every yeah, audience member yeah. only has yeah. the one. But after that particular yeah. show, Didn't uh, which was- say uh, bitches are crazy? Just, yeah, I think that's no, correct. No, no, no. He yeah. said, he said, bitches be shopping. Oh, they be shopping. <laughs> that was somebody else. They were, yeah, the two, the big two back then. Um, but Harry, I remember beat me to that, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like it. I feel like you're a very compatible partnership here uh, or a very combatable partnership here. Uh, but so the 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 thing I learned mm -hmm. after that show that my girlfriend helped me with was like to realize that I am like such an important element of how the show goes, because it's not like especially when it's a show like that. I. When I was there, I was doing the same show every night. Like, right. you know, the I could riff a little bit. I could, you know, be in the moment a little. But the show had to be 55 minutes. So if I wanted to do the whole show, I had to, like, not go too far okay. off script, off course. So why was it why was it limited to just the 55 minutes? That is because slot. the way over there, they have shows pretty much starting every, if not every uh, hour. Okay. Like, there was another show right before mine and another show right after mine. So, if, oh, so in the same theater. So it was like, bang, yes, bang, bang, yes. bang. Wow. Every, okay. They have so many venues. So, yeah, there's like four to six, like four, at least 4,000 shows going Mike on. Yeah. somehow decides that he's going to do four shows in that night and do the whole right. theater, which then is, yes. just rock out. Which is, yeah. yeah but, that, that would be, yeah, but maybe next time. Nuts. But yeah. so that so, yeah, the show had to be a certain length. And so I had to do it the same way every time. But the, even that it's not the same way every time because Never. the energy that you bring to it, the attitude that you bring to it. And so my girlfriend helped me realize like that if I thought that an audience wasn't like there for it, then mm -hmm. I might then be a little less there for it. And then it might become like a self-fulfilling prophecy, like a, like a cyclical thing, like a, a you know, a negative, it could be a positive feedback loop. If you're, if you love it and you think they love it, then you keep giving it more yeah. and more and it becomes true. It could be a self-fulfilling prophecy either way. They say, you know, think you can or think you can't either way you'll be right. And right. even 20 plus years into comedy, it's still, I have to now remember every Every time I go on stage, like for an audience that's never seen me before, mm -hmm. it's not either it's good or it's not, or you like me or you don't. Right. Like there are so many things that I can do, even with the same joke night after night, yeah, yeah. to yeah. make a crowd or a person like it or get it or connect yeah. or relate. Yeah. And of course, the same thing in a relationship, like the same words that yes. you, you can say the same words to a person and they could be like, well, if you don't mean them, if you don't feel them, if you don't yeah. have the same passion or energy or momentum to it you'd be like what i said i said the thing like you, yeah. you know saying just like yeah happy birthday what yeah. About, yeah i didn't really love the way you said yeah, yeah. happy yeah. like what yeah. i what i said it i said yeah. that what do you what yeah. do you want me yeah. to feel it and care you right, know right, right 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 but i don't even think we we're even thinking of it like that it's just so it becomes kind of this soup that is part of how i feel the day that i have the t am I? Is it hot out? Is it muggy? Is it? You know what I'm saying? There's all of these things that go into that soup to create this kind of dynamic that that perpetuates that. But I think most importantly is the intent. Um, and um, I, I I think what's it, this is a funny thing is a, I, and I, I always talk about this is I remember um, years ago I like one of your favorite jokes of mine hmm. is. Uh, Salad bowl, super super bowl, salad bowl. Do you remember when you used to do that? Oh, uh, interesting. I uh, keep I I don't remember from that, but I love that it's your favorite of mine, and I can't even think of what it is. Same so old. What it was? Again. What it was? Um, it was sort of about you being a nerd, being a nerdy guy, and go you would on. Go, you would go. You would go. Uh, remember this, Harry? How are you there? Fucking, where'd you ha go? You took your ha shit. Harry's back. <laughs> Sorry about that. You Sorry left? That. What the fuck? Uh, Harry, like, we, we, we need you to help Dante remember his favorite joke one of, of his mine. His favorite jokes is his joke, uh, uh, Super Bowl, Super Salad Bowl. I don't know. Sega Genesis. Like, <laughs> it was kind of like I'm not a guy who's into football. It was kind of yeah. That, it was. That I mean, that's really all it was. Was uh, I? I don't. I don't really follow football. It's not my thing. Super Bowl, Super Salad, Bowl, Bowl. Salad Bowl. Same I don't to know. Me. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> that was it. Wow. Like it, legitimately, no. that's so. It's so funny that I. 
the con the the concept yeah. that I care more about salad than the Super Bowl <laughs> that is one hundred percent resonant. And I I truly I don't know if this is on an album or if it's like literally something that we was saw this live. No, I unsl- saw it live. Yeah. I saw it live. Yeah. Yeah. And you so I stand up New York when I. Saw <laughs> it, right? the, yeah. I it might have been something have, that, that he's been working on and it just didn't take off and he never. I, or also like, sometimes Mike does these like almost micro jokes within a yeah yeah, yeah. Tr- a thing. truly yeah. I I love the idea every once in a while somebody's like i love this thing that you said and i'm like i truly don't remember don't saying remember. that thing yeah. but but it sounds like i could have would oh, and it could have been oh, you, you know a, a piece it. of a larger <laughs> thing yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but thank you i appreciate yeah. that i'm gonna go back through my records and try now, to find just it. so you know i i hung out with mike kaplan friday night i had the pleasure of oh. uh work with mike kaplan and he did say women be shopping. You, and this you, is 100% true. <laughs> Harry didn't even tell me he hung out with you. I didn't this, get a chance to. You yeah. cheating bastard. Oh, uh, you. Uh, <clears throat> it's true. It, I I did uh, say those words <laughs> in a context uh, <laughs> a, as part of a, a larger joke. Uh, more more that I'm quoting someone else. I'm sort of, yeah, you know, yeah. giving, I'm citing my sources of like, you know, comedy history. Like throughout <laughs> the years, there have been the men who have said women <laughs> be shopping. And where are we? Now, I mean, one of the points is that, I mean, even if that is so, that women be shopping, they like it's only, shopping. only in the past couple decades that they've been uh, financially allowed to be shopping. Good point. That, Good point. That they couldn't even get their own credit cards if they had a husband so in the this is a feminist 70s. kind of thing. This is yeah. a this is yeah. a, a, an applaud. But all I heard was women be shopping. <laughs> <laughs> that is, so oh, I do way. have to say things more, like Chris Rock does. That's why he says things three times to oh, make sure that it, everybody. You want to hear it? Yeah. You, hear it. Yeah. Yeah. you imagine if you'd have said Super Bowl, Salad Bowl, Salad Bowl, <laughs> Super Bowl? You can't, you ain't that tall. <laughs> <laughs> I I love it. I I do also. I want to say like just to to continue the the line of thought that uh, we've we're sort of like yeah, yeah. dancing back and forth between that so that exists in in comedy as a comedian we're trying when we start out to figure out what works not knowing that it might be a tone of voice or a movement or something else that makes it work one night and not another night and the same might be true in a relationship like when i when you're not as fully cooked a human or as fully cooked a relationship partner you might think oh they did something that i didn't like but Mm -hmm. it might be that you weren't receptive to a different thing Thing that you know if oh, you were absolutely. in a different place yeah. and it like, could have been just yeah. a misinterpretation of what it uh, was it's so many it the variables are just so vast oh yeah um, and I, yeah uh, oh go ahead no, no, I, wanted, I wanted to say this because i think um Please. i think it's important i think when you so there's something that i say other than bitches be shopping uh, mm. uh is that two things that you will always have to do as human beings is ask for forgiveness and give forgiveness mm. and 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 that recognition of of our flaws and our errors and and is and the recognition of that is who we are put you in a situation where you 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 it's less you're less likely to let your ego take because it, it this is going to turn around the other way at some point in time too and so do you want to treat somebody with this with the audacity how the audacity, how <laughs> could you when there's a really good chance that tomorrow uh they're going to be able to put you in that position and that kind of that kind of acceptance of your own flaws and the fact that um you know w- that it could be turned around the other way is interesting but i think it it's only interesting when your intentions are good in the first place you absolutely know. that i everything that you just said 100% and that the thing that i was going to say uh that i will say now that i feel like is basically the same thing that in my relationship now in this like you know the best relationship that i've ever been in one of the one of like our main tenets one of the things that we agree on like when things are challenging like if we have like you know if one of us is underslept or hasn't eaten or what whatever might be leading us to if one of us is particularly prickly or sensitive Mm -hmm. or cranky like truly either of us like if i haven't eaten and i didn't realize it then i might be more reactive and more likely to interpret things incorrectly or have an edge in my tone but our goal is to always remember at least intellectually if not emotionally you know mindfully in the moment that we have the best intentions right. for each other that right. if one of us says something that 
hurts the other one's feelings or could be interpreted in a way like right. we both want to remember and help each other remember and help remind each other like we we're on each other's side we're yeah. a team we yeah. we want to make each other happy we want to be happy with each other and we know that of course at our best that's what we're doing and if in some moment it seems like that's not what's happening that might mean that just oh one of us has something going on that is keeping us from being what we're distracted we had mm. some other experience whatever it might be but that it's not personal it's not right. that i have done something to her or she has done something to me it's right. that we are both or one of us is in need in this uh, on un, this inability to kind of have the empathy to where we can we can or maybe the the inability to be as present as we need to be at, at that time yeah there's a there's a book i don't know if we've talked about it a spiritual uh text called a course in miracles and i'd never heard of it uh but uh Rini, my girlfriend introduced me to it mm -hmm. and one of the like and you don't have to be a religious person a spiritual person like there's these valuable sort of like practical you know building blocks in here and one of them is that the this idea that everything that anyone does in life is either a call for love or an offering of love and while mm -hmm. an offering of love is very clear you know somebody's helping you somebody's expressing love somebody is you know showing love uh, being loving but a call for love could mean you know if if i you know have a tone an edge in my voice like oh that means i need something which doesn't mean that it's everybody's job in the world to provide mm -hmm. it for me everyone who's calling for love is not you know you're not obligated to help everyone especially if the call for love is coming in an abusive way or a violent right. way sure, like sure. Be because we know that when people are being you know abusive or violent probably that is is stemming from some abuse or violence that they have received themselves and so we can both empathize and like for we can if we want to if you feel moved to forgive but you can also forgive from farther away but if it's a, right, right, a partner right, right. that you know and you love and you feel safe and comfortable with yeah. then in those moments where we can hopefully hopefully at least one of you is in good enough shape to recognize that the other one might not be and if you both are in need then hopefully you can work it out together and figure it out uh figure out what you need to help each other get what you need moving forward <clears throat> Uh, you know, it, it's uh, so well, I think what's interesting about that is that you also have to be able to recognize and not with a with, again, this kind of this ego of this. You, how could you that kind of thing? But just understand that some people don't have the emotional acuity to even be in that space. And you can't be mad at them because they don't have because they don't like we all come to this with a trauma and we're hopefully you're trying to work out this trauma and so you get it into a situation like I'll, I'll give an example my so my dad i've said this before my dad's born 1920 grew up in the depression my my dad literally had rickets uh, rickets is a lack of calcium to put it for the audience where he had you know the bones in his legs didn't develop his work i mean can't you know he get rickets anymore i don't know the last can't time even get it. Got can't, you can't get it so uh no, rickets goes on ebay if you find rickets like in if, vintage condition you get look, at I, least seven figures for a one of my favorite <laughs> uh insult comedians don rickets you know don rickets, don rickets, i know that guy he's yeah. got little tiny legs <laughs> and uh, he couldn't do a whole hour though because he had rickets that was the thing yeah, about don no. rickets um, but he, but, um, you know, grew up during, during the depression, grew up during Jim Crow and he was the youngest, uh, boy of 16. And so wow. when I think about the, the, the torrid kind of relationship that we had, I, I also, I'm what really gave me solace. It gave me freedom of this, of this, you know, this, this judgment was that, Man, I mean, I don't know what it's like to grow up in in segregated Jim Crow America. I don't know what it is to to not have enough food in my and it's just unfair for me to not to take into consideration those kind of those kind of elements. But that, Dante, do you realize talking? that after his death, is that something you came to terms with uh, after? Because I know there was a lot of tension, definitely by the when he died. When he, I started to understand it, uh, but I, I um. I couldn't really appreciate and love him for what <clears throat> what he was to me until after he was gone, which is well, he certainly I mean, made it difficult. Yeah, yeah, he, he did make it difficult. difficult. I mean, just, I mean, when he was in his 
when he was in uh like he he had a like a couple of he had maybe four strokes and then his last stroke he was i remember we had to you know because he had a feeding tube and stuff he used to throw shit at me when i would go see him wow. and i and i literally stopped going to see him because he was so abusive and uh and i was like and i remember not i wasn't like he was kind of on his deathbed and i probably didn't go see him for a month until he passed away because I just, and my mom was like, you gotta go see him. You gotta go see him. And I go, listen, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to go some, look, I'm not in the deathbed with a food tube. Like I'm going to see him and he's being abusive. He's taking this time. Like he's going out like, um, like fucking what's the guy, what you talking Willis, uh, Gary, Gary Cole, he's uh, going out like yeah. Gary Coleman, you know, he, he's going, he's going to go out nasty till the end. And I just opted to not take that abuse. But I think later on, I really, I really understand that at the at the core of who I am as a person has a lot to do with me understanding what a man was and and mimicking who he was in terms of fantastic provider, a man, you know, a, a guy guy who kind of was very uh, implicit about keeping his word and the respect of other people and and so on and so forth. And so you know, I, I can I can really. Um, admire him more now that I probably couldn't at the time when he was throwing nachos at me, you know, it was a little bit different, but um, yeah, there was something I was going to say. It's like, so you, when you're in this, it's in, so, so it, it, polyamory and, you know, the fact that you were in this kind of open relationship and, uh, and, um, and I've been in situations where I've been in, uh, you know, in a polyamorous relationship or right, I wouldn't say polygamous, but um and what I realize is that even when it comes down to just sexually, there are times where I've had threesomes or foursomes or whatever. Um, I, though that energy that I put into all of them was energy that I could have put into one of them, and maybe and and, and but but I, I'll also say that there are there are, I've also come across people who cannot have that don't have the ability to accept what you have to. They can't even receive the kind of love that you have for them because they're just incapable. Um, oh, yeah. You know, go ahead, that's, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's first of all, that's really moving. Thank you for, uh, you know, sharing all of that openly and vulnerably about your your father and uh, and the things that you have learned from him, even yeah. though he was, you know, difficult uh, to be around. Of course, you, you don't have to be in a place where he's physically, you yeah. know. Uh, still assaulting you yeah. to the end, but you can also, uh, you, what you said reminded me of, uh, there was this Washington Post article about uh, masculinity these days. Yeah. And there's a really nice quote in it from this guy, Scott Galloway, uh, that said, uh, my view is that for masculinity, a decent place to start is garnering the skills and strength that you can advocate for and protect others with. If you're really strong and smart, you'll garner enough power, influence, and kindness to begin protecting others that real men men be protecting people they do be uh, protected they do be protected and, and so that's a nice you know a nice lesson that, that you have gleaned that's a great way to put it that's a really great way to put it whereas you you, you that it would be really difficult for you know uh feminazis would get offended by it where they're looking for this offense to it as opposed to look I just and and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I I mean I mean I think honestly I think at the core what women find attractive about men is that. So I and I, I may be going further than people want to go, but the reality is that I always say this is you know when you look at the history of human beings um 250,000 years approximately 200 to 300,000 years of there are there are instinctual things that are in place based on the fact that we've been picking mates and you know picking mates in the same way that we've always picked mates and some of those things have have um have changed and so on and so forth i mean but the reality at the core the things that trigger this attraction i think it is basically it's still you know on a cognitive level i think that's different in the way that we the way that we perceive those things expressed, but the things at the core uh, are are still the same things that want to, that need to be expressed in the first place. I've never met a woman who doesn't want to feel safe with the guy that she's with. You know, uh, 
I I hear you a hundred percent, and I think that because society itself has like evolved faster than let's say like biological yeah. evolution, like you know society today is so different. Like you yeah. know we don't need the same kind of like hunter gatherer culture. Right. Like there might be some, but you know that we've communally advanced yeah. so much that I mean even. I think, I don't know if this has always been the case, but my understanding is there are studies that show that, let's say, straight women these days are attracted to different kinds of men at different times of their cycle, such that, like, while they are ovulating and the, more likely to conceive and get right, pregnant, right. they are attracted to the kind of, you know, large, you know, the cave. cave the yeah, caveman yeah, yeah. protector, but then uh, the rest of the time, and then to raise the baby, they want like, you know, uh, a, a rash, they want me, you know, they want uh, an, an accountant, they want a, a rational. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. I think, I think that, I think you're cutting yourself short just because of the, the maybe because you're not a big. Because dude. I am so short, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think that's not, I don't think that's what it is. The, I think. The, the simple fact that you can have these conversations and have it and say, hey, hey, whoa, 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 let's let's sort this out in a, in a logical, practical way. I don't think that there's anything more masculine that, than that. Oh, I I really appreciate that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm certainly I'm happy. Also, you know, when we talk, when we make generalizations about billions of people, there's right. going to be uh, hundreds exceptions. of millions of yeah. exceptions potentially. Yeah. And so I'm happy to ha what's that? Oh, uh, my girlfriend just uh, heard me saying that and suggests uh, the word genderalizing. Uh, that is uh, generalizing yeah. about gender. Oh, generalizing. Yes. Uh, and nice. so she, yeah, she's uh, she's a great help to me. Mm. And I'm I'm happy to have found like that's the thing is we're because we're not. If you're looking for one person, let's say, or even if you're looking yeah. for a few people, right, like right. the the generalizations are like interesting, like sociologically, they're interesting mm. scientifically, but yeah. you they don't necessarily help you in the nitty gritty, like day to day. Like when you're dating a person, like knowing what all women are like won't yeah. help you. Like find out what what is this woman like? Who is this woman? Yeah. Is she attracted to you? Is she attracted to you at your best self? I'll give you here's another example from my personal life. When I was married and I and in the happy stage of it, like in like the mm. first year when I was married, mm. I remember and we were monogamously married. Mm. And so I was happy that I had felt like I did it. I'm done. Like, I don't have to date anymore. I don't right, have to right. go through that. And so I was able to be more at ease, like in my own skin and with other right. people. And I remember one specific time I was doing a show and I was like it was I was just starting out doing comedy. So I was like helping at the door. I was taking tickets mm. at this place, Dick Doherty's Beantown Comedy Vault in Boston. Mm -hmm. And I was help setting up the tables and putting out papers. And there was a, a party of three women who were there early. And so I was just chatting with them. And right. they were like, you know, I was in my 20s. They were in their 20s. Right. And I was just being myself. Yes. And I remember like two of the three women were like, uh, like did, wasn't, were not picking up. They weren't like laughing at my jokes. They didn't care about what I was. I, I could, you know, this is my interpretation. But that okay. one of the three women was responding. Like she was laughing at everything that I thought was funny. Right, right. And, right, I would, right. and so I had that that it occurred to me that both for comedy and for relationships, I'm like, oh, for a relationship, I want to attract people who are attracted to me naturally, who I am, not trying to put up a front, not right. trying to put my best foot forward, me just being who I am, mm. the the way that I am, like with my friends, like right. not all anxious or nervous. And then I'm like, oh, great. If one out of three women likes that, perfect. I want to go out with that one out of three women. The other mm -hmm. two, I don't want to try to, trick a woman who wouldn't right, like me right. into liking me and same thing with an audience i want to attract audiences i want to be able to be my best for every audience possible but we all know there are people who are more uh who will tend to like you more than other audiences based on it might be based on age range or demographic or just like you know there's different genres of music there's different genres of comedy there's different right, flavors right. of food you're gonna right. be somebody's absolute cup of tea more and, than somebody and else not and the way that you find your audience is by figuring out who you are, not trying to be like, what will people like? What will the algorithm like? What will like figure out what do I like? What am I like? Who yeah. am I? And then that will hopefully attract, you know, the partner that you want and the audience that you want. Well, I, you know, it's, it's funny. So, I mean, I'm, 
I've been doing consultations for, I don't know, about seven years now, six or seven years. And I'll get these young guys who are really lost or they don't have, they, they just have no boundaries or they're tr just trying to figure it out. And one of the things that I do is I, I have an exercise that I put them through that really, I don't even think they don't understand. They don't understand how nuanced the, the exercise and what i do is i tell them it's called i call it laying the five bricks it's going out um paying five compliments a day to five different women every day the the caveat is this though you're not trying to get a number the the compliment that you give must be honest it must be absolutely honest and uh it's not just the women who you would want to sleep with it's the old lady who's bagging groceries at the store. It's the janitor lady. It's the, it is the, the model. It is and everything in between. And, um, but it has to be based in honesty. And what I, what it really, ha what really happens is the first thing is five a day, every day. I know pimps that don't talk to that many women every day. So there's a, the first thing it does is it gives a, um, how would I put it? It gives, uh, 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 it removes the pro uh, the approach anxiety, um, just to do uh, <clears throat> exposure therapy. It's almost like exposure therapy. So you're doing this every day, and initially, it, it, it the guys who will, will start it, it'll take them hours to do five because you know because they're afraid. They there's a worst case scenario where they think that the worst case scenario is that she's gonna curse me out or she's gonna do this or she's gonna right. Then after. A week after you do 35 of them and none of them, nobody's cursing you out at the at the most. And I'm I'm not saying that I mean it it could happen where somebody freaks out, but oh, and the compliment cannot be sexual. So it can't be sexual, has to be honest, and it and it and it is an array of different women. So that and what happens is that women, uh, you know, I, I say the empathy, men don't always have the empathy to understand that every time a woman decides to talk to a guy she has to wonder whether or not he's going to murder her or rape her like this is this is the prerequisite that i think guys don't really understand that's the case and so they they're really good at detecting deception and stuff because they have to be i mean it's 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 a, it's a survival technique and and so they also know when when they when somebody's speaking to them non-transactionally you know that i this is just me recognizing something attractive about you and having the confidence to speak. So it, it creates a confidence thing where you, you're able to speak your mind, which is always, which is always attractive to women. If the fact that you you're comfortable in your skin to say something, it's non-transactional. So I'm not trying to get your number and I'm not trying to get laid. It, 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 it's a uh, exposure therapy. So that what it does is it, it gets you to be, you get a chance to be yourself right because it's the fear of what the response is and and a lot of times i think people are not honest especially men are not honest i mean well everybody's not honest but 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 i think when a man uh when you when you call when when a guy thinks he's when he's lying we all perceive lying as something we did to get something else like with the the intention on cheating somebody but we lie also, dishonesty is also when we lie not to end up in confrontational situations. And we also lie not to hurt somebody's feelings. But what I, I think I don't think that guys understand is regardless of the reason why you're lying, you're still a liar. If you're 85, 90% trustworthy, that's the definition of somebody who's untrustworthy, hmm. you know? Um, so this little process, this exercise that I that I put guys through, puts them in a situation where they got to be honest. Up, up, they they have to be present because. So if you have a woman who you don't find attractive, or a woman who's seventy years old who you don't find attractive, or maybe you do, or whatever, even if you're even if you're complimenting her brooch or her scarf, you know what I mean? Something it's non-transactional, and and so you teach men to not be as predatory. And that allows them to go. First of all, it, it, it says to a woman, I, I, I realize I have value. Let's kind of see if we fit as opposed to, 
give me your number. <laughs> like that, that kind of, you know, that kind of predatory thing. Yeah, that's uh, I really like I like that. Number one, it has to not be sexual and that it can be, I mean, explicitly for people who you're not attractive to can be like beneficial because there's probably a lot of people out there who don't get compliments. There's probably a lot of uh, people out there who like, you know, an older a person who like society values less or who might have like received compliments on their looks in the past. But whatever it might be, it doesn't even, I assume, have to be looks based. It could be like somebody does you a favor. Somebody, you know, gives you a nice deal on like the other day. I was a nice smile. It could be a nice smile. I uh, I was returning. I was buying something at Target, and it. I thought it would cost. It said it cost fifteen dollars. It came up as eighteen dollars. And this woman uh, came over, and I was like, I was you know self checking out, and I was like, I thought it said fifteen. And then she looks it up. She's like, it does say eighteen, but online it's twelve dollars. So I'll give it to you for the online price. I'm like, well, that's that's very generous. You're very. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't. I didn't even know about your program, right. but right, 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 right. It also it feels better. I just read another quote. I don't remember it. I'm full of quotes today, but it was something about that. Like the wealth that we have is the wealth that we give. And so like if you just have wealth, if you think about it with money, like if you yeah. just have a lot of money, like what does that do for you? It only is valuable when you give it to right. acquire a service, to mm-hmm. acquire a good that you want to or to give it to somebody who needs it or to buy food or whatever it might be. And so I feel like this practice of giving like it's good to be it's good to be giving number it feels good to yeah. give yeah and so that adds some joy to the world it also of course feels good to receive an yeah. honest genuine compliment yeah. especially yeah. if it's not always forthcoming in your experience uh so yeah i give you i know that you're you're it's you're recommending that men give these to women but i a man will give you this compliment that i like the the compliment energy that you're putting into the world because i mean it's just even if it doesn't like the fact that it's non-transactional it's just yeah. in the moment it's for yeah. the good for the joy for the the presence for right. the relaxation it's creating like positivity in the moment yeah yeah and and it it's you'd be surprised how often um the the responses you get from people who who in a lot of ways are not being how often people are not being seen and the fact that they all in a, in that moment they're being seen you know they're they're actually being seen and the way they respond to that. We're gonna do the hang um plug your stuff and then we're gonna do on the Patreon oh, side. Go ahead. What of you course, got going on? you got it. Thank you so much. Uh, so Mike Kaplan is my name, spelled a weird way. M Y Q K A P L A N. That's all my social media. That's my website. I have a newsletter I send out for free every week with a few jokes in it, and you can subscribe for more. That's at mikekaplan.substack.com. Uh, my newest album is called AKA. All my albums are on the various streaming platforms. And I have a new special on Drybar out this year called Live from the Universe that uh, you can you have to subscribe to Drybar, but if you use the promo code Mike Kaplan, you get a free month worth of that on their website. And the other, I think, final thing that I love that I just put out, uh, I made a book uh, of my friend Ramin Nazer illustrated a bunch of my jokes every page a joke of mine with a beautiful illustration by him the book is called heart brain art train and it is at mikekaplan.com it's also at raminnazer.com and uh yeah and then my my tour dates are at my website and uh i hope you come see me live or listen to my albums uh, oh and i i have a podcast also that i still need to have both of you on at some Tell point me. we'll do it uh, anytime you yeah. want Absolutely. the podcast is broccoli and ice cream i talk to people about the work of their life and the joys of their life and i have another one called the faucet where i just spout off stream of consciousness style like this podcast but without you two and so yeah all all of those search for mike kaplan wherever you want and you will find me and thanks so much for having me cool. you're the best mike i miss you bro um I harry you. talk to me uh you could go to all my social media stuff at harry turjanian is uh everything on tiktok youtube everything uh also you can uh check out uh patreon patreon.com slash manschool 202 that's where we do all the bonus content including the our show with Mike Kaplan coming up. Uh, and we do, oh, also we have all the archived episodes of Man School 202 starting at episode one when we were the Beige Phillips show. All of that is being uploaded uh, onto uh, Patreon every day. So check it out. Patreon.com slash Man School 202. Yo, uh, Google me, bitch. You know what it is. 
Dante Nero, Don, the Dante Nero, and everything like that. Go to DanteNero.com. If you want to do a consultation with me, uh, click on consult. Don't forget the Patreon. I'm putting stuff on my YouTube page. Um, things are going down. We're getting ready to get the merch together. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to such sexual revolutions being podcasted, man? I love y'all, man. See us on the Patreon side. Let's go.